Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to Making History Mission 3. This is the series in which I'm going through all of the missions that come with the recently released Kerbal Space Program DLC. And we are, as I mentioned, on Mission 3 to the Moon via Minmus. You know, when I first saw that title, I was thinking, um, oh, this is going to be something where we're going to go to Minmus first, and then we got to leave Minmus and go to the moon all within the same mission all with the same vehicle I thought oh that sounds like funny it's nothing like that we don't worry about it so here we have the mission um got a silver and I'm probably gonna get a silver event again because I have absolutely no idea what's required to get a gold I think I've done everything I can do in this mission and I feel I can say that because what I've gotten in the habit of doing is hitting this edit button so that we actually enter into the uh, mission builder mode and you can actually go through this and take a look at the whole mission so here's the start note here we'll zoom in I'll just I won't go through all of this but just really briefly so you can see how this works so here's our start node and uh, where our launch site is and it says here that uh, you know you're gonna get your uh, you gotta get into an orbit about Kerbin where the apoapsis and periapsis are between 95 and 100 kilometers and uh, if you do that you get 500 points and it goes through all the rest of it you can see how many points that you get and uh, like for instance here to get the min miss we have to do it in less than 10 days for instance if you do that you follow the line that means you get a score multiplier uh, of two and another 500 points so going through this I could sort of see everything that I needed to do in order to get the points and I think I've done everything <laughs> I only get a silver I don't know I'm either missing something or something isn't right, but you know what? I'm not going to worry too much about it. Why don't we get started and really see? Oh, yeah, we got to restart it. Sorry, because I got to erase my thing, and then I can start, and we will uh, take a look at what this mission is all about. Okay, here we go. Mission briefing. This mission recreates the heady days of the early Munar probes. You start ready to launch to the stars, and your objective is ambitious, but the PR team assures us that it is worth the risk. Reach Minmus's SOI. We also packed a little surprise for the Kerbal observers back on the ground, a mystery goo to release in orbit over Kerbin. Just remember to run the experiment while in orbit just below 100 kilometers to let it goo or let it go. Ready for takeoff, we'll be back in touch during your flight. So continue. As you can see, we're at the alternate launch site. This comes, this build, this ship is ready to build. Uh, you can't modify it. This is what you got. Uh, again, you can see it's taking advantage of a lot of the new 1.875 meter parts. Uh, as this isn't my, I, I don't like the staging. <laughs> so I'm going to take a moment to fix the staging. I'm going to put the launch clamps down here with the... Uh, with the engines at launch I like to do that both at the same time and here this is the fairing I'm gonna release the fairing somewhere around in there okay now uh, we are at the alternate launch site and we're going to Minmus and some of you might be asking the question oh my gosh how do you know when to launch and all that kind of stuff well they've made it easy for us the answer to that question is now not quite at full thrust because I find that uh, this thing the thrust to weight ratio is a little too high for my personal liking there we go we'll just let this thing go on its own I'll keep an eye on it obviously um yeah I've got the nice radial boosters on there we are going into we're going straight east but because we are launching from the alternate launch site, which is at a latitude of 45 degrees, it means that our inclination is going to be 45 degrees. And we have no way of having that inclination being any lower than that here. We're falling a little too quickly, so I'll put on the SAS and stop our fall a little bit. I always like to hit this uh, 45 degree pitch mark at around uh, 10 kilometers. It was kind of a little bit off from that. I generally find though I've been the less mucking about I do with my trajectory the better so even if my trajectory is less than perfect uh, I prefer to just kind of you know let it ride the prograde vector rather than to get all super duper um, 
picky about having the exact right trajectory because you'll waste more fuel with all of your attitude adjustments than you will just with less than an ideal ascent. At least that's what my experience says. All right, so we're riding this up until our apoapsis hits a little over 95 kilometers. But we are just about ready to lose our radial boosters here. And there we go. Awesome. I love the little SRBs built into the boosters. We got a nice shock cone coming off of that. Look at that. Beautiful. And I put the thrust now up to full now that we've lost four-fifths of our engines. Uh, attitude control when the engines are off are a little bit questionable. I'll get into that in just a little bit. Why don't we pop the uh, fairing here. We can take a look at our probe. See it's built around the state Putnik. Got a mountain of antennas that we really don't need. I suppose we need one of them, but we certainly do not need all four of these, but we shall extend them because it looks good. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, just under two minutes from apoapsis. Okay, now, um, not a lot of attitude control here. You'll see I, I'll, I'm pitching up here and you see not much happening, but there is RCS built into it. So they're giving you RCS for attitude control and by what I say not a lot of attitude control I mean not a lot of attitude control because of reaction wheels because the only reaction wheels are actually built into a, the one probe body that I'll get to in just a little bit that's pretty good all right let's let's start this up once you're burning though there's no need for um, RCS because we have gimbaled engines down at the bottom there so plenty of attitude control while firing, while burning the main engines. Oops, slow ourselves down here a little bit. Getting, letting, I don't want apoapsis to get away from me. Remember, we want uh, our orbit to be just under 100 kilometers. Oh, I'm out of control. Sorry, that stage ran out. <laughs> and the next stage is ridiculously powerful. It's just too, whoop. That's good. There we go. This has to be between 95 and 100. So there we are. And then what we are supposed to do is release the goo. Release the goo. Ta-da. All right, great. This is Walt Kerman from the PR team. Great work. The mystery goo has just spread over the sky in a majestic multicolored cloud. No, it's more of a rainbow as seen through the sunlight. Wait, two rainbows now. Whoa. Kerbals are celebrating this achievement and we are expecting to receive more applications to the astronaut complex. Nice job. You should now think about putting your probes to sleep after setting a course for Minmus. And we'll be in touch again when you are orbiting Minmus. Yes, putting the... Um, thing to sleep you see electricity management is going to be a big deal that actually might i should be keeping an eye on it we are draining electricity very very slowly even if you turn the sas off still draining electricity very very slowly and you have no ability to generate electricity other than when you're running the engines so you want to use the hibernation mode that's built into it and this confused me uh, when i first did this mission if you right click here you will see that the hibernation mode is already on. This probe body is already in hibernation mode. And I saw it went great. I started time warping and ran out of electricity because hidden down here is a second probe body, the Tricky Devils. And this one has the hibernation off. So you have to turn that hibernation on. And now you can see we're not draining electricity anymore. However, it won't let you set up maneuver nodes with the uh, hibernation off so or with hibernation on so <laughs> I gotta turn it back on off again okay so here's our orbit inclination about 45 degrees and you might be wondering oh my goodness why, how about you know getting to ourselves to Minmus well it turns out see what you're gonna need to do if you wanted to, if you were ever gonna do this without them helping you out like they are right here you need to actually time it so that Minmus will cross the relative ascending or descending node out here by the time you get out there. Thankfully, they set this up so that you are actually going there at the perfect time. If you 
put your maneuver here on the ascending node and just burn prograde you should get your encounter this won't happen normally they just set this up at the right time whoops so that uh, you know you're hitting min miss at the right time where is our oh I haven't gone far enough yet <laughs> there it is so you can see how close I am right there uh, so that's why I wanted to launch right away because I knew I was already close to the right time and then if we just tweak our thing here a little bit oh maybe a little more yeah there we go let's focus in on Minmus oh my goodness there we are and you know what we'll do we'll do a mid course correction here we're gonna be getting to min miss in about six days little just under seven days in order to get the two times multiplier you have to get out here in ten days so we are comfortably within that so we oh that's good I think so turn that off okay let's set ourselves up a correction burn add the maneuver and uh, probably radially down. Yep, that looks like that'll do her. Oh, that crashes right into Minmus. Now, there is a requirement for this Minmus orbit that it be uh, circular with altitudes between 9 and 12 kilometers. And it doesn't care about inclination or anything like this, but I would recommend that you come around prograde on it because if you come around retrograde the other way uh you're probably going to be in the communication shadow um when you come around the back you're going to come around the back side of min miss and be in the communication shadow from Kerbin. so you don't want to well if you want to you could i guess but i don't want to deal with that nice and slow pop Okay, I'm going to do the rest with RCS. All right, we are here. Okay, and we want this to be between 9 and 12 kilometers. So I'm going to go for right in the middle, which is um, 10 and a half. And no maneuver node, I'm just going to burn radially inwards. There we go. Oh, overdid it a little bit. RCS back. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, there we are. You got the ship to Minmus. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now it's time to learn a little more about our mysterious smaller satellite. We're going to settle once and for all whether Minmus is made of mint ice cream. First, we need you to conduct and transmit a gravity scan with that small blue box on board. Then we need you to crash Muna 1 into Minmus to test its composition. We know you can do it. Oh, yes, of course I can do. Crashing is my specialty. Okay, small blue box, of course. There it is, the gravioli right there. We need to right-click on that, and we need to log our gravity scan and transmit that back to Kerbin and because I am doing this underneath 10 days this is actually the time marker there we go it is done that's the actual event that marks the time this time has to be under 10 days in order to forget a two times score multiplier okay now we are ready to crash into Minmus so I'm just going to keep it on retrograde and we're gonna crash I want to stay in the be in the light side here you want to come down fairly steeply um, if you come in really shallow it's incredibly easy to min miss to hit and bounce and not have uh, I think it's probably the the probe body that needs to be destroyed the stay put Nick um, if that doesn't get destroyed if it bounces then your mission might end up being a failure which is quite the pain all right, let's go. Oh, the sun's come up. How nice. 
with a minute left to go till impact we're gonna do ourselves the suicide separation here oh yeah there we go you can take a look now at the actual probe it's got this really funny um, little RCS uh, port here even though there's no monoprop on this thing at all so it's it's clear it's just there for for Lixies. I guess it looks all right okay where are we at here 30 seconds to impact I can't time warp anymore unfortunately because I'm too close to the surface but uh, where's our other piece oh it's way up there okay 10 seconds to impact eight seven six five four three two Oh, oh, see that bounce? See what I tell you about? Uh, nice work on the fabulous educational destruction of Muna 1. In fact, you did so well that we now want you to crash Muna 2 into the moon. Isn't rocket science fun? While you're working on that, our scientists will be working overtime to determine if Minmus is as delicious as it appears in our telescopes. All right, let's send Muna 2 to orbit about the moon. All right, so this is Muna 2. Muna 2 is identical to Muna 1, but where I launched Muna 1 pretty much immediately because it was already at the right launch window to have me hit Minmus, this might not be the same situation. And you do have, if you want to get the times 2 multiplier, you do have to get to the moon in under one day, one hour, and 45 minutes. And if you want to do that, uh, you have to launch at the right launch window. If you don't care about that, just launch whenever you want. So let's talk a little bit about the launch window. So we are obviously launching from the uh, alternate launch site, the Woomerang launch site, and we're going to be going into an orbit of about 45 degrees. And so our orbit's going to come down this way. So from where our launch site is, here, let's center on Kerbin here. From where our launch site is, let's dial that around to the uh, 9 o'clock position there. About there, right? Our descending node of our orbit is going to be about here, and our equatorial ascending node is going to be around here. Now, let's say we do our burn. We're going to want to do our burn, our transfer burn out to the moon at one of those two nodes. Let's take a look at where the moon is right now. Well, let's actually spin it around this way, given where the moon is. Okay, and again, now I'll put uh, the launch site at about the 3 o'clock position as best as I can eyeball it. So let's say we do our transfer burn here. Of course, we're going to elongate our orbit so that our apoapsis ends up coming out to the moon's orbit out here. And it's going to take us about a day to get out there. The moon has an orbital period of six days. So in that amount of time, one day, it's going to do about one-sixth of an orbit. Now, if you can imagine taking the circle and dividing it into six sort of sectors... Uh, I'd like to just imagine half of it, and then I take that and imagine that being divided into three. The moon's going to be moving, probably end up about here-ish, I would say. So when we are here, the moon's going to be around here. We're going to be ahead of the moon. That's not good, right? So what we want to do is start time warping until we have the alignment the way we want it. It takes a bit of playing around. Now you might be saying, wait, 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 Aben, you said I have to get there in one day, one hour, and 45 minutes if I want to get the times two multiplier. How, if I start time warping, I'm wasting time. Uh, the thing is, is the clock doesn't start until you hit an altitude of 50 kilometers. So right now you can time warp to your heart's content. So what I would, I'm going to do a quick save because this takes a bit of playing right now and then it allows me to come back to this. Um, and what I want is more about Kerbin rotating than it is about anything else. Like Kerbin's going to rotate, you know, like faster than the moon goes around in its orbit, of course. So what we're going to do, what I want to do is I'm going to watch this sort of, I'm going to watch this node, I think, do, 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 let me think about this, because this one's already ahead, yeah, and it's going to go this way, it's going to get worse. This is the one that's going to get better. So I'm going to watch, uh, <laughs> I'm going to watch this 12 o'clock position relative to the moon. And uh, we're just going to time warp slowly. And again, I want that 12 o'clock position to be 
I don't know, around here-ish. Okay, I think I'm going to go for it here. So I got, again, launch site at about the 9 o'clock position. So right here is where I'll be doing my transfer burn. That gets me out here. Looking at this, that is, I think, pretty close to a sixth of an orbit right there that the moon's going to go in that time. I'm going to go for it. Again, I, I did a quick save, so if I want to come back, I can come back. Oh. Looking good. Heads up that we loaded the Muna 2 with more mystery goo. The PR team asked that you run the experiment and release it into a goo cloud when in orbit around the moon. You know, to impress the kids back home. And keep in mind that your electronics are getting slowly fried by the cosmic radiation. You have about 20 days. That is what actually started the clock, that message right there. So you got 20 days to do the mission. That's actually pretty easy. But uh, you have uh, one day, one hour and 45 minutes. So that's going to be one day. We're going to add a three hour, three and a half hours. I'm going to call four and a half hours. I'll call that right now, though. I got to start thinking about my circularization okay we are in our orbit let's see how this transfer works out so same deal as it is with Minmus we should be getting a moon oh yeah that looks pretty good let's focus on the moon alrighty oh that's enough okay alright well, well whoops Back to map view, focus the moon. Uh, so we're going to get out here. We'll do an adjustment en route just like we did before. But you can see here the time is 5 hours, 2 minutes, and whatever now. Uh, getting there in plenty of time. So after my correction burn, I got my closest approach pretty close to the moon's equator and also at an altitude of 30 kilometers. And you will see why in just a moment. Bing, that's the orbit I'm supposed to match. Uh, it's a 30 by 30 orbit with an inclination of zero, and there are points for being accurate with it. So you definitely want to hit this accurately. So it's good to know that this is going to be the requirement before you get here. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, not too shabby. Uh, I think I'm going to actually just see if I can do this without using a maneuver node. I want to bring the periapsis so it just touches the orbit there, which obviously means I need to burn, uh, what is that, anti-normal, otherwise known as south. Alright, that's definitely good enough there. Okay, so we're going to set up a node right here at our periapsis. And clearly we're going to need some retrograde on this because we got to get our capture, but... Even more than that, we need some nor anti-normal, I suppose. Alright, I think I'm calling this one. That should definitely be close enough. Okay. So, we got Perry. Oh, it's up here. Dot, dot. That's, that's got to be good enough. My inclination is... Yeah, that's good. Oh! orbit went away so I I'm pretty sure that was good enough now what it needs me to do is to perform this gravity scan that's the official sort of end of the clock type of thing so gravity scan oh no it's released the goo no gravity scan release the goo there we go. All right, that does it. Every Kerbal who looks up at the moon and dreams tonight will see our goo cloud and know that they might someday stand on the moon and see Kerbin. The final part of your mission should be simple. Guide Muna 2 into the surface and crash it. It is a giant fiery ball. Do it somewhere we can watch over here. Oh, by the way, a message from the science team. Turns out Min Miss has just made a regular old rock. It just happens to look like mint ice cream. Of course, that won't stop me from having a bite if I ever make it there myself okay so they do give us a waypoint we gotta hit it's right there the best time to uh, you know obviously I need to make a plane change and the right place for me to make the plane change is out here about a quarter of the moon's quarter of a turn of the moon
node. See here? That looks pretty good. You need to come in within 20.6 kilometers of it. That shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to come a little bit closer and then we're going to do the retrograde portion of this. One thing about this waypoint that's not at all obvious, I first thought it would be on the surface. That would seem, whoa, whoa, I'll shoot, of course. One thing, <laughs> there we go. Um, I thought would be that, tweak it this way, is that it would be on the surface. That would seem natural, but it's in fact up in the air, so you actually want to go a little bit past it. I think that is looking... I'm getting too picky, I think. That is looking pretty good. All right. We will ass assume our crash positions here in a prograde direction. Start making our way that way. You do want to come down pretty steeply. And the reason for that is because there is uh, bonus points for hitting at over... 200 meters per second, but quite frankly, that isn't all that difficult if one thinks about it. Okay, there is our waypoint, about 30 kilometers away. I think coming within that radius isn't going to be an issue, but you can see how it is up in the air. We are about a minute from impact, so once again, it is time for the suicide separation. I want to make sure that this is what gets totally destroyed. Okay, I'm assuming the waypoint disappearing was a good thing. Oh, I cannot time warp anymore. Okay, we're about 25 seconds away from impact. Pretty seen a curb in there in the background. And then we'll find out how we did. 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and what did I tell you, Silver? <laughs> and this is exactly the same score I got last time. I don't know, unless somebody can point something out to me that I am missing. I honestly don't think you can get a better score than this. Now, someone will screenshot their better score, I'm sure of it. But, like, I don't know. I look at this, I don't I don't know what else to do. I've done, I think, everything. There's my times two multiplier for my min-miss orbit. Or, no, for getting to min-miss really quickly. I got my bonus score for my moon orbit of 30 kilometers. I got my times two multiplier for getting to the moon nice and fast. Uh, so... I don't know, there's my high speed bonus. I don't know. Either way, that's going to end it for this episode. I thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time for Mission 4.